Hello again, and welcome to Winning with the Wrangler at Dick Powell's Leadership Corner, brought to you by Earth, Wind, Fire, Water, Training, and Development, where our passion is building leaders of today and tomorrow. Leaders, the information on today's program was gathered from many different places and many different people. So if you hear yourself in our conversation today, please remember, it is not all about you. Now, today's program is going to take a little bit of a turn. We're going to start off with something that, well, some of you might say is negative, but I think it's a positive piece that we can all learn from. You see, I was asked a question, and the question was, is how, how do you see organizations dying so rapidly in today's time? So today's topic is death of your organization. Now, we've all belonged to something. We've all been involved in something. And, in, and if you're any kind of a leader at all, you're going to be in an organization that might have had this happen to it. And you didn't see it coming. So let's get started. I feel say, often sad when I watch an organization start the final approach to a sad ending. How many opportunities to reverse the situation had been missed? Possibly the reason being the leader is really no leader at all. They slowly remove choices for participation of its members. They squandered the opportunity to build relationships and encourage new leaders. They believe that they and only they can have an idea to teach, instruct, or hold counsel. They seem not to notice the people drifting away and those who are staying become more and more silent and resolve that the end is near. Such is what I see daily. I was at a location here just recently and they said I heard more than one person say this. That was in leadership positions by the way. Well, it really doesn't matter what we're doing because we're this thing will close down in five years. So we might as well spend all the money now and, and, and just, just get out. That was a scary thought hearing that coming from several of their leaders in their organization. You see, the very first sign of death is when there have been no have been two opportunities conceived, planned and promoted by the leadership only to have one change dramatically and canceled before its time. The jealousy of the leadership group or one person that there would be another choice for the people is just too much and they rush to squash anything but their own interests. Now if that's ever happened or you've seen it or watched it happen, what did you do about it? What was the opportunity lost? You see the sharing of thoughts by silent. Think parking lot conversations. When the leaders are not around, is that this organization will be gone in five years and I'm too old to fight another round. I hear it in their voices and I see it in their slumped shoulders. And so it'll die. The shame is the silent feel they have no forum to voice their opinions or ideas, so they quietly go along to get along. How in the world can this death knell be changed? You see, we first must raise new leaders. This is our job. It's our main function as people in leadership. True leaders that practice and place people ahead of everything else need to come, up, come to the forefront. That the thought process is more choices equals more opportunity. More opportunities equals more growth. When the leadership closes down the number of opportunities, 
I heard it said before, and I, I, I will repeat it. When you remove opportunities, you make slaves, not participants. When you remove opportunities, you remove different choices. Slavery happens. Put that in your thought process just for a moment. Start changing your paradigm of how things are happening. And understand that we, our job is to raise new leaders. So I asked these questions of the people that were in this organization that we were invited to come into. Are you a leader? Now, very few people raised their hands. And when I explained that they're all leaders, that we all look to someone, they kind of shook their heads because they had been put down so many times that they really didn't believe in themselves anymore. When I asked who speaks for you, they, they said, well, they do their leadership. I said, well, do they understand what you want they, they're supposed to say? Do, have you talked to them? Has there been a discussion to and from? So they, when they speak for you, they truly speak for you. Got pretty quiet. And then I asked the question, who talks about you? And they said, I don't know. Well, what do they say? I don't know. You see these one, two, three, four, five, four questions are probably the most important questions that I ask any time that I go into a location that is on the downhill slide. Are you a leader? Who speaks for you? Who talks about you? What do they say? If they don't even know who you are, are they really a leader? You see, these are vital questions for every leader and every potential leader to ask continually of both themselves and the quality of their leadership. If your leadership is not doing evaluations of what's going on, are they really leaders? So what are others saying to you, for you, about you? Is the leadership really taking the time to get to know who you are? You see, that is the basis of this question. This is why organizations die, especially nonprofit organizations. And churches. Is it safe to assume that if no one is helping communicate the message of your leadership, then no one is following you? You see, that statement that I just read you, that whole piece was by Bob Briner and Ray Pritchard, two people I put a lot of respect into who know about leadership, especially nonprofits. So when we go in and ask, start asking questions of the people and the leadership, when we ask the leadership if, they, if they've even talked to the people, so many times we find that this big communication gap has been there for a long time and it's been installed on each new leader as they've come in. We make the decisions, they do what they're told. You know, that just doesn't work. It never has worked. When there's no buy-in, there's no loyalty. When there's no loyalty, there's no commitment. When there's no commitment, you have nothing. You see, our main job as leaders is to build more leaders. And that means we have to share. It means we have to delegate. We have to give people a chance. We have to let them try new things, and do different things. And we even have to let them fail from time to time. You see, failure is a most positive learning tool that we as leaders can share with the people around us. Learning to take a risk is one of the most important pieces of leadership. Building the character helping other people, sharing, 
is building your leadership ability. So I asked these questions at the end of the first time we met with these folks. Who are you mentoring to become a better leader? <laughs> Let me tell you something. I asked that question to the leadership as they sat around a long table. A round table. And they all looked at each other like, I was going to, you know, just rip out their eyeballs. None of them had a decision. None of them made a choice. None of them had anybody to take and tell me that they were working with to mentor them to become a better leader or even a leader at all. They were holding the whole organization tightly within their grip and not letting anyone in. So if someone, someone in their leadership position had failing health and had to leave, they didn't have anyone to replace them with. And no one stepped up because, quite frankly, they had been put down so many times and they had to ask the question, well, why should I stand up? This is what I'm talking about, leaders. I'm going to ask you another question. What are you doing to become a better leader? You see, leadership happens daily, not in a day. And leadership requires us to be ongoing, continuous learners. That means we're going to need to go to a seminar, listen to a speaker, read a book, work with other leaders in our same organization or, or organizations around us, learning from other people what works, how do we add to our our knowledge base and how do we share that? You see, if we're really leaders and we're not good at some things, you know, that's our job to go learn that and then share that with other people. The other day I was asked to stand up and give a little bit of talk on things that weren't taught in school. And I have to tell you that the things, the same things that weren't taught in school were the same things that weren't taught in most organizations. And because they weren't taught in either place, both places started to fall. This thing of character and trustworthiness, that all goes back to this very, very point, doesn't it? You see, leaders, it's not someone else's job to do these things that we're talking about. It is the job of each and every one of us. And for the folks who are out in the bout, and, and if you're not in that leadership position, I'm going to encourage you to stand up, get up, stand up, look up, and link up. And do it now! Use Before it is too late. I was actually kind of put off when I was asked to speak about the, how death of an organization happens. It put me off because... I guess I, I've seen it happen way too much lately. We're seeing religious organizations shrink. We're seeing fraternal organizations shrink. We're seeing volunteer organizations shrink. We're seeing regular business opportunities shrink. It's not because of they're bad people or they're bad things. I don't. I still believe that the people believe in their hearts they're doing the right thing. It's just they're doing what they've always done and they're getting the same reaction. It's just when volunteer organizations at one time it was kind of something you did. It was almost a mandatory situation. I remember when I was a first line management person, it was expected of me to be involved in the community in some kind of organization. And that expectation came with it a certain sense of obligation. It was expected that I would, I would belong to a religious organization, that on Sunday morning I would be somewhere where I should be. The difference is now we have lost a couple generations of being able to make good choices and good decisions. So, leaders... We need to step up our game. 
We need to reach out to everyone within our organization. We need to be better communicators, better instructors, and better people who share the knowledge of our world. You see, when I said these words, I feel say, often feel sad when I watch an organization start the final approach to a sad ending. I meant it. You, when, when we're called in, most of the time it's almost too late to revive them. I don't have one of those machines where you can take and put them on and send an electric jolt through and start the heart again. The heart comes from our leadership. And we need to recognize the opportunities and reverse the situations. We need to step up our game. We need to reach out to the people in our organization and encourage them to step up, speak up. You see, this is more than just one person. It's just more than one or two leaders. It is more than your leadership team. If you're on a leadership team and you're not always looking for that person to replace you at the end of your term, if you're not mentoring someone to bring them alongside and say, look, this is what we're doing and I, you know, I, I really believe you'd be good at it, give them a chance. Take a risk. You just never know. But if you're doing the thing that stop, starts this organization to go down is that you're filling all your leadership, leadership positions with someone who can fog a mirror and has a heartbeat, that's not the way to do things. That tells me you didn't raise more leaders. That tells me you, the leadership, held it so close to the vest that now you're struggling to stay alive and stay survive. And you're trying to really, well justify your your position you see really truly I tell you that when leadership removes choices for participation of its members things start to go downward when leaders squander the opportunity to build relationships and encourage new leaders we've got a problem when they believe that they're the only ones that can have an idea to teach, instruct, and hold counsel. You start to slip back to the do what I tell you to do because I told you to do it. The might makes right rule does not work, it's never worked. The sit down and shut up doesn't work either. You see, sooner or later people will vote with their feet in a non in a non financial world and you know nonprofit they'll vote for their with their feet they'll just leave and you'll say well how come and I'll say well did you did you have an exit interview did you ask him how come did you even spend time did you even take an interest and find out why they left nine times out of ten I get a no they just left so you didn't do your evaluation. How can you make things different? How can you put a, a new opportunity in place to see it doesn't happen again? How could, you know, a lot of times if you would have called them or spoke to them and said, look, I see you're leaving. Can you just tell me why? You might be able to solve the situation right then and there. But you never took the time. That's where this stuff starts to happen. You see, there's many different places when the death bell starts ringing. When leadership just doesn't notice that people are drifting away and, and the, those who are staying become quieter and quieter. They get less and less involved. I was at a church and they were doing the Wednesday night meetings and same 17 people out of a 200 member church showed up same people and so i did a little questionnaire and asked them why they were showing up every wednesday quite frankly the number one reason was it gives me some place to go on wednesday night are you learning anything are you getting no i come here for the camaraderie 
that told me a lot of right then. That told me that there wasn't something being taught or shared that the rest of the congregation wanted to know about. You see, 17 out of 200, not a real good opportunity there. But when I talked to the leadership about it, the leadership said, well, so-and-so, they, they, they're they the ones who teach every Wednesday, and they've always taught every Wednesday, and they're the only ones that can teach every Wednesday because, you know, they're the only ones who can teach. I said, so the people in the audience, you never gave them an opportunity, you never gave them another choice, you never gave them more than one choice? Well, no. <laughs> I, I'm doing just like I did with you. I started, I smiled real big. I said, well, there you go. There's your number one reason you're dying. Well, fortunately, that church has changed that thought process, and now they're growing, so that's good. The other thing that this whole thing is, is that when you have more than one opportunity, and it's been out, and it's been published, and it's going to go on. And all of a sudden, the leadership goes, oh, no, we got something else going to conflict with us. Oh, my. Do you really believe that everyone's going to come to your one thing because it's only one choice? Wouldn't it be better to take and have more people go to two things and have two choices or maybe three? <laughs> Who are you to, to think that everyone only wants to come see you? That's pretty egotistical, I think. And that's another notch on the old belt where we're going down the hill. The parking lot conversations are a really way to take and tell if your organization's having in a problem. As leaders, I'm gonna I'm gonna encourage you to every once in a while to look through the windows as people stand out in the in the parking lot. Now, they might say hi and goodbye, and there might be two or three minutes at the cars, but if they're there for 45 minutes, I'm telling you what, they're talking about a situation inside your organization that's got a problem. And you're going to want to know what it is. Here's the problem with that, though, or the opportunity. They don't trust you enough to come and talk to you. So when I noticed this, I... Wandered out to the parking lot, and I said, hey, how you doing? My name is Dick Powell, and I'm just asking questions, you know. And uh, what came out of it was they didn't trust their leadership. Because they had gone with them with other situations, and they had been pounded down. So now the way they handled things was they went out the parking lot. They they commenced with the, uh, each other, tried to find a solution. If they couldn't, well, they just left. No one followed up, so they felt no one cared. Amazing to me. When I heard some of the more experienced people say to me, I'm just too old to fight another round. I'm all done. I've been there, done that. And I, you know what? I just want to come, sit, listen, go home. It's a way out. and so a way time away from my house. Other than that, it's just seeing some friends. It didn't mean anything to them. It's a shame. It's a shame that they felt they had no place to go talk to and no, no one who was going to listen. <coughs> you see, now you know why I talk about leadership so much. I had one pastor tell me that they, he said, Dick, you look at everything through a leadership lens. And I said, yes, I do. And, of course, I read the Gospels, and there it is. Boy, I, I tell you what, it's just right in front of you. But what I'm trying to really pass along to you is, is that this part of death of an organization bothers me. And I hope it bothers you as leaders. I hope you're listening to me and saying, Gee, I hope we don't have that happening in our world. And, and we need to do something about it. Let's get a forum started where we can share ideas and, and get going. Let's have more than one opportunity, more than one choice to take and do something on Wednesday night. Let's, let's Even on Sunday, whatever day, it doesn't matter what the day is. Let's, let's give people more choices of things to get involved in. It always made sense to me that more choices meant more people. 
And as we grew our organization, we added more things. Now, there were times where there were some things that have been going on for a long time, and, and we'd done the evaluation, they just didn't work. But we were always adding. So when we subtracted something, it wasn't a terrible thing. There were still more choices other than that one. And oftentimes, people would come to us and say, well, I think that's outgrown its world. Let's put something in its place. <laughs> and I would say, okay, it's your idea. Get going. Rock and roll with it. You know what? Most times, those worked just fine. And because the person that came to me and said, I want to do something, I let them do it. I didn't let them do it. They did it on their own. You know what? I was just ahead, shaking sure. Give it a shot. There's a big difference there. More people involved, the more commitment you have for your organization. The more commitment you have for your organization, the longer its life. I see things just kind of withering around me. And so I've spent my time doing personal accountability and personal leadership. Because that is where it all starts. I want you to take and write down these questions. And I want you as a leader to ask yourself them to yourself to other leaders, to other people in positions. You know, are you a leader? Who speaks for you? Who talks about you? What do they say? I want you to remember that these are vital questions for every leader and every potential leader to ask continually, both of themselves and of the quality of their own leadership. I'm going to encourage you to pay attention to those around you. You see, comments and body language say a lot. A lot of times people will give you a comment in kind of a joking way, but it's really not. Their body language as they stand before you or sit before you and is going to take and tell you a lot if you're paying attention. What others are saying to you, for you, and about you, pay attention. Put it into your normal mode of thought process and learning. You see, it's safe to assume that if no one is helping communicate the message of your leadership, then no one is following you. Again, get some help. Look around. Find a coach. Someone you can bring in and work with your leadership and the rest of the people. This can't be just a one-time thing. I was at a location and they said, boy, Dickie, we, we, we just went and did a five-year plan for our organization. And, and you know what? We did it in six hours. And I said, excuse me? How did you involve everyone within the organization in six hours? Did you have prior meetings to gather information? Oh, no, no, the leadership did this. We're, we're all done. You see what I'm saying? Follow what I'm telling you and encourage, encourage the people who are in leadership as well as the people who are in the organization to do this just this one thing. Get up, stand up, look up, and link up, and do it now. I see our time is running short like, like always. So on behalf of myself, Dick Powell, and the whole Leadership Corner team, we want to say thank you for being a part of today's program. Um, oh. Thank you for being a part of today's program. Sorry about that. And, you know, if we was hope that you've learned a nugget of wisdom and guidance that will help you be a better leader. And until next time, we want to make sure that you know when you're ready to have Dick Powell come and do a leadership seminar for your organization, all you have to do is give us a call. 727-422-1833. 727-422-1833. And if you have any questions or comments on today's program, don't hesitate. Give us a call. 727-422-1833. And you know what? It's been my pleasure to be with you today. I hope that you have looked forward to 
this next opportunity with great anticipation. Work with your world and make it happen. Till next time, BW the Wrangler saying, ride hard, ride fast.